Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Rottler webinar series. Um, today, we're going to be talking about ants. <laughs> Attack of the killer ants. Um, you know, this time of the year, we, we tend to see quite a few ant calls, um, and the ants are out there moving, moving like crazy. Um, we don't typically have any ants that would cause any harm to anybody, but um, there are some other parts of the state that, you know, you tend to see some fire ants and, and they can be pretty um, un unwelcome guests, if you will. So um, with that, um, you know, there are many, many species of ants out there. Um, there's, I think there's north of 10,000 different species of ants in, um, on this earth. Um, in our world, we tend to deal with a couple, two or three different ones. Um, and we usually categorize them into a group of either small or big ants. Um, I'm sure some of you out there have seen, you know, the big black ants that you might get crawling on your back deck, or you might see them on the tree or something like that. But um, um, a couple of the small ants that we deal with, and, and I'd say that, you know, 95% of the time, um, the species that we're going to deal with getting into our homes and our businesses um, are going to be the odorous house ants. Um, these ants um, kind of get their name um, from <clears throat> the fact that they actually will put off an odor if you smash or crush them. Um, that's not how we identify them, but um, there are some other things that we look at with ants. Um, and it is important to understand what really, you know, um, you know, what ant you're actually, the species that you're dealing with, because it'll help you kind of figure out where they're coming from. Uh, the other small, the second small ant that we see or hear about um, on our side of the business is um, called a pavement ant. Um, generally, they, they live out around, you know, the sidewalks or your driveways or your back pavers on your, your back patios. Um, they do a lot of displacement of soil, uh, but they don't generally come inside looking for the sweets and the sugars. Um, every once in a while, you'll see them out in the garage in your recycling bins or something like that. But um, a pretty easy ant to deal with um, as far as that goes. So um, the odorous house ant, um, that's the one that, like I said, tends to come inside. Um, they are, you know, this time of the year, uh, they're relocating their nest multiple different times, but um, they come inside looking for food, um, moisture, or harborage. So that's the, the three big things they're looking for out there. Um, <clears throat> as far as ants and nests, um, you know, there, there's a couple things that we need to understand with nests. Um, the outside ones like that pavement ant, you know, it, this would be something very similar to what their nest might look at, look like. Um, you've got the workers that will be bringing food back to the nest. Um, that is one characteristic that we like to pay attention to anytime we see ants is if they're carrying something, they're more than likely going back to the nest. Um, one thing to understand about ants is, is that they don't have the ability the, the, the worker ants um, don't have the ability to eat a solid food. So they actually have to bring that back into the colony and feed it to the larva. Um, the larva have the ability to break down those solids and create a nutrient that they will then pass off to each other, kind of like what birds do. You know, they feed each other back and forth. Um, that process is called trophallaxis. Um, not super, super important, but it does, um, help us on the on the professional side understand how to to go after insects um, like these um, and exploit that habit. So um, a lot of times when we're going after ants, we're using baits, and that's some things as a homeowner you can do. Um, there are a number of different types of baits out there that you can buy. Um, typically, those are the over the counter. There are some professional strength versions that are a little bit slower acting, which will then penetrate deeper and farther into the nest. But um, there are some areas of the nest, again, to go back to this picture here. Um, there's, you know, you've got the queen here. She's laying eggs in what we call um, kind of the nursery areas. So there may be multiple areas like that. Um, you'll have workers actually um, storing food in other parts of the nest. Um, and there's even a place where some of the, 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 the pupa actually survive as well. And typically that's usually higher in the nest. Um, you want that in a drier area, but um, these lower parts tend to hold a little more moisture and there's a lot of temperature control that goes on in the nest as well. So, um, you know, wet conditions tend to force ants uh, all over the place. Um, this time of the year here in the Midwest, obviously we're getting a lot of rain and that odorous house ant, 
you know, will literally pick up its whole nest and move it, you know, upwards of 10 times a year. So um, that's typically when the phones start ringing at Rottler. Um, that might be typically when you see the problems popping up in your house is after a rain um, or before a rain um, and they drive up into the house. Um, as I said, they'll relocate this thing. They could be in the kitchen one day looking for food and they may have a nest downstairs on the basement, you know, sill plate or the next time they may move and go up to the ba uh, upstairs bathroom or something like that or downstairs, you know, where your kids leave the pizza out or a soda can or something like that. So those are some of the things we see um, with the movement of ants. Um, it's important to also understand that, you know, ants are a social insect that use a, a pheromone to communicate. So this pheromone tells a story of where the food might be or where danger might be. And it's important to um, understand that, that that pheromone can last in upwards of 12 months. So um, you may get rid of the ants today, but understand there may be another group of ants coming from another area that might find that pheromone and, and reutilize that. So um, just something to know about the insects. Um, they basically use their antennas to kind of cross over that pheromone and that, that, that kind of tells them what to do. Um, here's an example um, of an ant actually preparing or building this pheromone. So as they get closer to the food source or um, even if it's a, a, a bad situation, you know, there's a predator or something, you know, they'll start marking or leaving this chemical trail, if you will, along the edge. Um, and, you know, each ant that comes up to that will reinforce that trail um, and, and lay it down thicker and thicker for that fact. So um, it's important to understand that part of it. Um, it's, it's also important to know that, yeah, you can use a bait, but you also might need to clean that pheromone trail up. So if you have a counter, you know, say you have a Formica countertop, um, an ant's trail across that every day, um, you can do some home remedy things to kind of stop that and keep those ants from coming back up on that. Um, you know, simple hot soap and water is a way to do it. Um, you know, cinnamon, for some reason, ants just do not like cinnamon. Um, so you could even sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon there. Um, you can even make a concoction of baking soda and water. Um, the baking soda will act as kind of a scrubbing or a sandpapery kind of um, component that'll help remove that pheromone trail. So um, I do mention vinegar in this as well. I will tell you that there is something you got to be real careful with vinegar with is, you know, if you have a granite countertop, don't apply that. Um, vinegar can be acidic um, and it can cause staining. So um, I would only use that on um, synthetic or plastic type, type surfaces or painted surfaces. Um, it goes a long way when you put it on a, a windowsill um, or on that, like I said, for mica countertop. Um, you know, some things you can do outside, uh, you know, remove leaf clutter. I don't know if you've ever found, a, you know, an ant nest, or at least I typically find them a lot of times outside in uh, the leaf clutter. It tends to hold a lot of moisture, which is important and necessary to them. It gives them some shelter. Um, and uh, it just, it's, it's, it's not a good thing to have out around the perimeter of the house. It will attract other insects as well. So um, keeping your gutters cleaned out, you know, there's a lot of things that happen there. Those are some of the most difficult situations to get rid of ants in is when you've got a gutter, you know, they're nesting at the gutter. Um, and, and it's really hard to find out how they even actually get down into the house. And, you know, over the years, we found that, you know, they will literally cross into the attic space. Um, they'll follow wires down. So if you've ever had ants, ants emerge from your, you know, electrical outlets or something like that, um, you know, that might be what's going on. So anytime I have that happen, that's the first place I go is to check the gutters and make sure that they're in good, clean order. So um, controlling water, as far as that goes, that helps as well. And then recycling, um, you know, I, I do a lot of recycling myself. I keep mine out in the garage. Um, occasionally I'll have that exact situation pop up where I get a, a, a little nest of ants in there or a trail that goes all the way down my driveway, down the sidewalk over to my neighbors and, you know, and my neighbor sometimes doesn't always clean up his leaves, but um, that's something I pay attention to. And those are some things that might help you um, keep from having something established like ants in your garage. So with that, as always, you know, Rottler, we, we run specials all the time. Um, if you have an ant problem and it gets too big for you to handle, obviously give us the call and we can help you out with that. Um, 
We do have a special going for $35 off. Also be out on the lookout for our next webinar um, in June, June 29th. We've got the, you know, that's kind of a seasonality of time for stinging insects. And we'll be talking at length about that as well. Um, with that, are there any questions? Yes. Um, you know, you know. Bottom line is, if you have a situation that um, you've got a pest, get a hold of them any time. You know, we 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 want you to have a pest-free environment. And um, you know, one ant. If that's what you see, give us a call. We'll come out and check that out. It may. I mean, typically with ants, it's never just one. So um, usually, what happens is you have some scout ants out there, and they're looking around for food. And uh, we want to make sure we get ahead of that so that those ants don't uh, establish themselves and infest your home. Next question. Is that it? All right. Well, with that, I'll thank everybody for attending again. Um, and at any time you have a question, go ahead and send us an email and we'll, we'll get that answered for you as quick as we possibly can. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in June to uh, talk about those, those um, uh, stinging insects. You know, they can be dangerous that time of the year. And uh, we want to make sure that you stay safe. Thank you.